السلام عليكم اهلا وسهلا ولكم تو ذا 17th day of Ramadan which is بدر ما شاء الله may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant you all victory in your own individual badrs <coughs> excuse me I hope you are able to join us today for our very special Badr discussion where Ansaran Mardini blessed us with such a beautiful, beautiful, um, beautiful, like symbolic help to understand Badr and really apply it in our lives. It was beautiful. If you missed it, it will be posted on our Patreon, our pa the Patreon platform. So you do have an opportunity to uh, take advantage of that uh, if you uh, did miss it today. Uh, I'm sure that somebody will put in the notes down below how to access our Patreon, the Rabota Patreon. Today for our, this is the, this series that you are joining now is called Faith, a Love Story. And it is about looking at our aspects of faith as we look at the ajzat that we're reading subhanallah i've been uh, i've been a little bit under the weather so alhamdulillah but i mean thank you so much inshallah i feel like today is gonna be uh today's gonna be the day i'm gonna feel better inshallah at iftar time when i can take medicine all that other good stuff all right, so today, because uh, today I decided we're going to talk about death. Death as part of faith, a love story. Because death is something, uh, when we're talking about the battle of Badr, we're thinking about sacrifice and we're thinking about death. And when we're thinking about, um, I think we're always, as we are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month, one of the things we're thinking about or should be thinking about is the limitations of our own lives. And so here in this topic today, death and life stages, we are supported by a verse in Surah Al-Hajj in the Jizit that we're reading. I just realized I don't have my, oh, good I do have glasses. In the Jizit that we're reading. And we are supported with a verse that says, it's quite a long one, verse number five. Ya ayyuhal nas, in kuntum fi raybin, min al ba'athi fa inna khalaqnakum min turabin, thumma min utfatin, thumma min alaqatin, thumma min mudghatin, mukhallaqa, o ghayri, mukhallaqatin, linubayyina lakum, unuqirru fi al-arhami ma nasha, إلى أجل مسمى ثم نخرجكم طفلة طفلة. So up to here, Allah subhanahu wa taala in English, I'll tell you, is saying, Oh humanity, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, about the day of judgment, then no. Now, now Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us about our life, how we were created in our life stages. Know that we created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, then developed you into a clinging clot, then a lump of flesh, fully formed. Uh, uh, let's see. And then in order to demonstrate a power to you, then we settle whatever embryo in the womb for an appointed term. Then we bring you forth as infants. Uh, so that you may reach your prime. Uh, I lost my place. لِتَبْلُغُوا أَشَدَّكُمْ وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتَوَفَّى وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْذَلِ الْعُمَرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَى مَا مِنْ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا Some of you will reach, some of you may die young, while others are left to reach the most feeble stage of life so that they may know nothing after having known much, old, old age that is. And then uh, the rest of the verses about the earth and how the earth is lifeless and Allah brings life to it. And then the next verse, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّهُ يُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ And he is the one who gives life to the dead. وَأَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ He is capable of all things. So this verse 
gets us started on this idea about death and thinking about death and what is death and and what are we called upon to believe around death and how do we how do we how do we fit death as part of this love story that we've been talking about so the human being has several life stages we have several life stages we our life stage begins with the creation of our soul and then our soul is put into the body while our mother is pregnant with us so while our mother is pregnant with us our soul enters our body and now the soul and the body they they connect they meet and connect with one another and then as then the the baby grows and the mother gives birth so birth is a is a transitional stage birth is a transitional stage from the stage of being in the womb where our physical life is very different than our physical life here in the womb you are breathing amniotic fluid in the womb you are stuck in a very small place in the womb your food is coming through the umbilical cord and it's a very different life and the transitionary stage between the womb and this dunya is birth then we live this life and this life that we're in now the one we're all in together has two stages it has the stage of childhood which is the stage where we are not held to account but we are growing and learning and then it has the stage of maturity where we are held to account and after this life which this life will end it at the time that allah has written for it each one of us has a life that is written it might be a very short time it might be um 20 years it might be 10 years it might be 40 it might be 60. The Prophet said the average lifespan of his ummah is 63 years. But of course, we know that um, we know many women know and have, have, have experienced the death of a child either as a miscarriage or um, after the child was born. And that is part of this end of life. And then others of us have experienced parents, maybe your grandparents who lived as the verse describes, until they, until they did not know what they once knew, growing to such a degree and an age that, that they become almost like children in their need of service and, and to be cared for. And so life, the length of life is up to Allah, but the transition between this life and the next stage of life is death. Death is a transition. So the soul leaves the body and the body dies and we are then put into the grave. The grave is then another life stage when the soul is put back, we are, we are answering questions. Then we will stay in that stage, the grave or the barzakh for a period of time. And then we will have another transition which will be the day of resurrection or the day of judgment. And that is another transition unto our next life which is the eternal life or the 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 reward or punishment for this life now in this love story this life the one we're in now we have opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us we talked about free will the other day with the ability to make good choices to make correct choices and Allah send us sent to us messengers to tell us what to do that is right. I was talking to somebody today about um, her child and her child, her adult child. And she was telling me, you know, I don't know, I feel like she's blaming me for her a decision that she made. And I said, listen, when, when someone makes bad decisions, even as adults, it's easier to blame someone else than to take responsibility. So don't worry about where the blame is falling. Just see what you can do to give her good advice and be supportive where she needs. But we can we get into a spiral 
in this life because the part of this life is all about struggling and striving to do better. And so what happens is shaitan comes and that's one of the things Ansarinda talked about in Badr, how shaitan is our real enemy and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this and how we need to respond to that in a real way. And so let's go back for a moment and think about the stage when we were in our mother's womb. And imagine for, the, for a moment if I shrunk down into a little tiny, teeny tiny person and snuck into the womb, me or anybody, to tell you, oh, hey, guess what? Pretty soon your life is going to change. Pretty soon you're going to travel along a very narrow passageway. Your face is going to get squished and your bones are going to be squished together. And then you're going to come out into a space where there's a lot of light and you're going to breathe air and a scissors is going to cut your umbilical cord and you're going to be eating through your mouth. Imagine what the baby would say. I feel like the baby would be like, what are you talking about? <coughs> and one of the things is that the baby would not be able to relate that that message would be confusing because nothing <coughs> excuse me nothing in their life is like that and of course the we in this dunya we celebrate birth even though i think we all have to admit it's probably pretty hard on the child but we celebrate birth of course we do what a blessing what a great blessing but death is, this, is the parallel to birth. It's simply a transition. The only thing is with death, we've had messengers come and tell us what we're going to experience. We have messengers come and tell us, this is what it's going to be like. An angel will come to you depend, based on your deeds. Have you ever had the, the blessed blessing of meeting someone really, really, really close to Allah after they died. I have. And the face, I don't know what to say. The beautiful face. Because, you know, the angel, when it comes to the one who has many good deeds, comes in the form of a beloved, of a beloved, someone who you will be happy to see, excited to see. You won't have fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us, if we are good and we spent our life worshiping him, sends us, who invites us into the next life in the most beautiful way. And of course, the opposite is true. For the one who has been distant, the one who has sinned, the one who has been, who has made bad decisions, who has, who has let shaitan have victory over their life. Because those are the only possibilities, by the way. Either you have victory over shaitan, or shaitan has victory over you. That's it. And so, on the day of judge, on the, excuse me, at death, if you've let shaitan have victory, then it will be a horrible experience because you would have joined that camp. You joined that. That team, that army, Yalatif. But if you have given, if you have, if you have fought Shaitan and never given him victory or not given him victory in the long term at least, then death will be a, a beautiful reuniting with your beloved. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And it will be something that you can, when you are laid down in your grave, that's the next life. This death, I'm only talking about death here today. That experience of death. Of course, up until the throes of death, Toba is accepted from us. But once the veils are removed and the reality is there, that's when, when our soul begins to leave our body. Then it is that 
a list pan, then Toba is no longer available to us. And we also had to talk about Toba in this in these sessions. Now, the if we look at um, the companions, for example, when death came upon them, and people would ask them, "What can we do for you?" and they would say, "Oh, I have everything that I need." They were awaiting the the move to the next life, and Subhanallah. We are, when we await that moment, as we are in this Ramadan, awaiting that moment, we're awaiting death. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of the love story, has given us a, an experience that is ach, the brother of death, and that is sleep. When we sleep, when we sleep, our soul, Allah calls back the souls, um, like when we sleep, our soul shines out. I think that's a nice way to put it. Our soul shines out of our body. And then when we awaken, Allah sends the soul back. Of course, sleep researchers, they don't really know what sleep is. And we just know that it's a strange time when the muscles and the senses are less able to interact with their surroundings. The body is there, and the soul is rooted there still, but somehow you're not fully there when you're asleep. It's just not the same. And this example of sleep is to help us understand death. Because sometimes in your dream, when you have a dream, you, not every dream, but some dreams, when you feel them, you feel them truly, truly as real. You wake up and you say, oh, wait, I thought I, I thought that was, that was real and this wasn't. SubhanAllah, Allah says, it is Allah who calls back the souls upon their death as well as the souls of the living during sleep. Allahu atawaffa al-anfus hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha ويمسك التي قضى عليها الموت يرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. In English, it is Allah who calls back the souls of people upon their death, as well as the souls of the living during their sleep. Then He keeps those for whom He has ordained death, and releases the others until their appointed time. So sleep is somehow the brother of death. It, is helps, it helps us to learn what death is. It helps us to relate to it. And as I said, death is the removing of the human soul from one realm to another. It is not, it is, we, do, we grieve death because we don't understand the reality of the next life. I remember when I first moved here in 2012 because of the war in Syria, it was a tough time for me. I wasn't really excited about it. I, I didn't want to come back. I wanted to stay living in Syria. And I remember there was a terrible shooting of children in an elementary school. Is it called Chestnut Hill, I think? And I, I remember sitting on my couch and crying and thinking, Ya Allah, Annie, the... I don't know, somehow seeing children shot in, in, here in an elementary school after I had left a war was just, it just didn't, I was struggling with this idea. And I remember thinking, well, what am I going to do? Like, what am I gonna doing with my life? Sandy Hook. Thank you so much. It was Sandy Hook. Yeah, it was Sandy Hook. And it was really, really hard. It was just, a, it was just a strange uh, experience for me to have that. Um, I don't know. Anyway, but so at that time, I remember thinking, okay, what am I doing here? In the United States. I can't do anything to help Syria. Like I, that was just the reality. As much as I loved it, as much as my heart was bleeding for what was happening back in 2012, 2013, as much as I knew I could do nothing, nothing like, and nobody wanted my opinion either. So, I mean, there was nothing that I could do. 
And so I, I, and I looked at this situation. I had met a whole bunch of Muslim women that summer in America and was quite surprised at the state of Islam amongst Muslim women in 2012. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, well, I can take what Syria gave me and give it back because, just a minute, there, I missed the point. The, the point is that I, I started thinking about the different kinds of trials and how the trial of death and war and tragedy is terrible, but those people are going to heaven. And when you really believe in the next life, that is a beautiful thing. But the trial of the one who's in this life and is tried by his religion, is child by religion and is losing faith, sometimes because they see death and destruction. I know for many of you, it's been hard to see what's happening. The last time I mentioned the name of the place, my video got disconnected. So I'm just going to say in the places that our hearts are bleeding for. And the, so, but the, that trial of faith is a trial that has an eternal misery. And so I thought at the, that time, I thought, well, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. Allah brought me back to America. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help people with that are facing the trial of faith one way or another, because that's the trial that lasts forever. Death is not a trial. Death is a transition. Death is a time. It is, it is a birth. It is the same as birth, but it is moving from this life, dunya, to the next stage of life, which is al-barzakh, or the grave, as we await the day of judgment. This life is the only life we have to do good deeds, except for there are good deeds that come to us in our grave, and those are the sadaqa jariya that we've given or a child, or someone we've left behind who makes dua for us, or an ilm, a knowledge that you've taught that is that continue, people continue to benefit from. Those are the three things that we can benefit from after this life. But otherwise, everything is happening now. So do your best. Get ready for death, not as something morbid. No. Get ready for death as the next transition. If for when I gave birth, when all of the times I've given birth, you get to that stage at the end and you start thinking about, oh, how can I prepare for this? How am I going to be prepared? What, how, am I, how is the house prepared? How, how are the things prepared? And it's a, everyone's excited with you and we'll talk to you about it. And, well, did you get your bag ready? Are your things ready? But we don't talk about death, even though death and birth are just parallels of the same thing. And we have to be prepared. The three things that you can take with you into the next, that will continue for your good deeds to answer Sada's question, are sadaqa jariya. That means money, sadaqa that you've given that continues to have good deeds. So I often say, if you give to rabata, ribat, that like if someone learns to pray, so we have some prayer cards for converts. Let's say you give general money to rabata. And, and that's a general. So of, of all the projects, let's say one person learns to pray from some of the prayer cards. And now that person's teaching other people to pray. And that person's teaching other people to pray. So now that sadaqa becomes sadaqa jariya because it continues. So those rewards, they become surprises for us in, after death. Also, alam, a knowledge that you teach. And if you leave someone behind to pray for you. A child, a good child who will pray for you or somebody else, if you have someone else who will pray for you. So get prepared for death. We want to get prepared for death. And I wish, I almost wish we had people that we talked about it together without feeling like, oh, that's morbid. Like, is our will written? Do we have our coffin? Do we have our coffin? Do we know where we're going to be buried? Of course, nobody knows where they're going to die. What's the state of the cemeteries where you live? All of these things that we need to be thinking about. Most important, 
we need to think about, Ya Allah, how am I meeting you? Will I have debts to you? Will you have debts to Allah? Of prayer? Or fasting? Or will you have debts that need to be paid? How can we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of ways? And Ramadan is a blessing for us because it gives us strength to fight shaitan so we don't meet Allah on the, on the team or on the camp with the army of shaitan, a'uzu billah, but rather with the angels. Ya Rabb, inshaAllah. Death is something that we miss the people that pass. We miss them terribly. I have... Different griefs in, my, griefs in my heart for that, myself. We miss them terribly. And that's part of the dunya, that's part of love. But at the same time, we need to grieve the Prophet said, and we miss him. And we need to hope to be with him and meet him at the hold. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him, Gigi, and uh, your husband, and grant him Jannat al Firdaus, inshallah. And, and inshallah, you are, you are one person he left behind to make du'a for him. So we all make du'a for him, inshallah. Remember that death, death is sad for us because we have love. Love is a beautiful thing. But death for ourselves is the reuniting with the beloved if we, if we work our life correctly. And now it's Ramadan. So let's work our life correctly. Let's read our Qur'an. Pay off our debts. Let's give sadaqah, give sadaqah, give sadaqah. Let's do extra prayers. Do good deeds, as many good deeds as you can. Today at Rabata, we have two, an uncle, and a Rabata uncle and a Rabata husband. A Rabata father, a Rabata parents, and a Rabata husband. I'm really excited about this because 98% of our donors are women. So I'm really excited that we've got two men who said, wow, I love, I love the blessing that Rabbata has brought into our lives. And they have a match for $15,000. So that match, I mean, they're getting themselves ready for those beautiful good deeds. And they're giving us the opportunity as well. So that match, $15,000. So we can match the $15,000 on this beautiful day of Badr. And uh, inshallah, if we match it, like that's just excellent. It gives them more good deeds. It gives us more good deeds. And your dollars become doubled. So if you donate 100, it becomes two, four becomes eight, etc. So do donate today to match the match and to reward our, our Rabata men. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them greatly. And mashallah. And may we, and also donate to, to get ready for that next transition. It might not be for another 50 years. Inshallah. Oh, I see a question, a good one here. Is it true that we'll know when our death is close? Some people in old age say they can feel it. It's like Allah sends them signs and subhanAllah they die shortly afterwards. Is that true? It's true with some people. Yeah, I'd say it's true. Not, but not everyone, certainly not. But um, it's with some people, especially people that are close to Allah, have spent their life in ta'a and goodness. Yeah, I think they, they start, you don't know like, oh, this moment, but you start to feel, oh, I need to get my, my stuff in order. SubhanAllah, you know, you don't need as much sleep as you grow older. And many years ago, I heard a cassette recording where Hamza Yusuf said, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf said, that, was, that is to help people have more time for ibadah at night. I love that. All to get prepared. To get prepared. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Congratulations on Badr. May you have victory in your Badr. Remember, if you are, if you would like to, uh, if you missed the, the lecture about Badr today by our very esteemed Sierra scholar, Ansarenda Martini, you can, uh, you can see it on Patreon, our Patreon platform. Where to donate to match? Thank you. Yes, I didn't say that, did I? So the donate to match, you would go to uh, rabata.kindful.com, but also you can go to rabata.org forward slash support or forward slash support rabata. Rabata.kindful.com. Go ahead and jump on over there or rabata.org forward slash support rabata. Oops. Yes. Rabata.org forward slash support. Thank you so much. Perfect. Yes. 
$15,000 match for Badr. Let's have three, I bet 313 people <laughs> could match that just like that. I wonder how many, I don't even, I don't have, let me see if I, I think calculator wise, I would have to, I'm, I'm not a math whiz here. I suppose somebody here is. But if we said 15,000 divided by 300, all of us better folk, you know, that would only be about $50 a person and we could match it. If we had 313, mashallah. Ya Rabb, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are ready for death. And, and let's change our attitude towards it. Let's remember it's a transition. Let's remember it is transitioning us from this life to the next. Let's know that it's coming. It's real. No one can avoid it. No one can avoid it. No one. Let's know it's coming. Let's face it in a beautiful way. Let's prepare for it. Just like we pack our bag to go to the hospital to give birth. Let's prepare for it. And prepare for it with people that will make dua for you. Ilam that you teach people. And Sadaqa Jariya. And for the Sadaqa Jariya today, we have the 15,000 match. Rabata.org forward slash support. Please jump on over there and match. I, I hope by tomorrow I can come on and say, yay, we matched it. Inshallah. All right. Have a beautiful rest of your day, everyone. And continue to make dua for one another. May Allah bless these last few nights before we end in, enter into the last 10 I hope we all have good health for the last 10 so we can be ready to stand forth and uh, work hard in those days. Assalamu alaikum, everyone.